I have uh, a history of prostate cancer in my family. Uh, my maternal grandfather had prostate cancer. He had the radical prostatectomy. Uh, at that time, that seemed to be the only uh, cure, so to speak, for uh, prostate cancer. Uh, later on, uh, my brother, uh, five years younger than me, uh, had uh, prostate cancer, and he had the nerve-sparing uh, surgery, uh, and he has been very uh, happy uh, with his life. I got involved uh, with a study at, uh, at Siteman uh, in the urology department, and they were uh, studying uh, PSAs uh, along with uh, every uh, year I would do a, a biopsy. Uh, and uh, I did it for three years. First two years, everything was just fine. Seems like, though, the third year, uh, my last biopsy, uh, they called me uh, after the biopsy about two weeks later and said, Mr. Smith, we have uh, a um, situation here. I started talking to other people who had the radical prostatectomy, the uh, different uh, seeds, and the hormone. I wasn't quite sure that was my cup of tea. Uh, I felt the radiation uh, was probably the best way, so I made an appointment to uh, meet with Dr. Mikulski over at uh, Siteman. Patients will do themselves a favor by not simply accepting the opinion of a single specialist, but rather getting the opinion of multiple specialists, learning about the pros and cons of each. Uh, I went downstairs uh, at Siteman and uh, they explained things to me. Uh, the nurse uh, practitioner was there. She gave me an understanding of how many treatments it was going to be, uh, 43 treatments over eight and a half weeks. It was uh, the type of uh, therapy that it, she said, you know, that eight and a half weeks sounds like a long time, but it is very quick and very easy to, to come in, get your uh, testing done, and get your radiation and then be on your way. All of that sounded good to me. When patients are undergoing a course of external beam radiation therapy, the first thing we need to do is what's called a simulation. That is to obtain a CAT scan with them in the same position that they will be for treatment. Actually, before we do that, though, uh, we do place into the patient's prostate markers that help us localize the treatment each day. After the markers are placed, the patient returns for a, a CAT scan, uh, sometimes supplemented with an MRI scan in our department to define uh, the prostate target uh, and then define the radiation beams that go on there. The patient then returns about two weeks later and uh, begins his treatment. And the process basically involves uh, the patient walking into the treatment room, lying on a table uh, for treatment, and then the radiation therapy technologist will localize the position of the prostate using either those markers or those beacons. And then they'll step out of the room and the patient simply holds still, lies still on the table, while the radiation treatment machine will move about them in you know, 360 degrees, stopping at various angles and then uh, delivering the radiation while the, the beam is stationary. It, there's no pain. There's no pain at all. Uh, you probably spend more time changing clothes to get into your uh, radiation uh, pajamas, I call them, uh, than uh, you actually do in the getting the treatment itself. I was very, very comfortable with the direction I was going. And I can't say enough about how these folks acted, not only in a professional manner, but how they were very down to earth, explained everything as it was going to happen, and it happened that way. Uh, and I, maybe I'm the poster boy, that's true, but <laughs> I really uh, feel I did the right thing.